second and third. Yeah. Okay. So, when, what would Z score be? Z score you have to do, um, you have to compute the mean and it's the option. Like 8.25 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So why would I do 8.25? Well, you have to do all of them. Then you do this one, then you do that one. Because you know, all of these have a Z score. Oh, for a certain. Num certain area, every number has to be Every number has to be And then, uh, on a, what do you mean? Bell curve? Uh, you can't run it. Like regular number line. But we don't know where the mean is, so we can't actually find that. We didn't even know if this is a, <laughs> this does look right. So Wait, can we actually run those in college applications? Oh, uh, I have a question. It says the median is 8.0. And then you want to go uh, show a bell curve with a plus 1 standard deviation. Or plus 0.1 standard deviation. What's your essay? That's this right here. Do you have to do negative and positive or no? Yeah. You should do negative and positive. <coughs> and I noticed that we did uh, one version of the curve. Yeah. Could we have done another version too? No. There's only one curve. No. No. If it's single peak symmetric, it only looks one way. And if it's not symmetric, it's not going to look anywhere. Yeah, this is bullshit. <laughs> okay, let's continue, everyone. <coughs> All right, last one, last part of this is what proportion weighed less than eight? Okay, so again, again, hey, 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 everybody. We are running out of time a bit here, and I do want to finish. So we want to know what proportion are less than 8.0 exactly. Remember what I said, this is a map. We can find out where 8.0 is. 8.0 is right here. If you want to find the area to the left of 8.0, since we have an empirical rule, because this is single peak symmetric, from our imperial, imp, empirical rule, we should know that this area is 0.16. Okay? Empirical rule is very important. Question three. Birth weights at a local hospital are normal <coughs> with a mean of 110 and standard deviation of 15. Okay, so again, the mean is 110. The standard deviation is 15. We're told we're approximately normal, so we should be able to draw a bell curve. Let's draw a bell curve. Okay. <clears throat> the mean is 110. So we'll put 110 right in the middle. 110 has a z-score of 0. Okay. Next, standard deviation is 15. So we're going to add... We're going to start on the left side. I'm going to subtract 15. 10 minus 15, negative 5. That's 95 right there. That has a negative 1 z-score. Next one is 80. 95 minus another 15 is 80. That has a z-score of negative 2. <clears throat> Let's go on the positive side. 110 plus 15, 125. That has a z-score of plus 1. 125 plus another 15? 140. 140. 140 has a z-score of positive 2. Now, you're probably not going to use all of these z-scores. But until you get really used to using them, it's a good idea for you to write them all down. We want to know the proportion between 80 and 95. 80 and 95 is right here. We just did this problem, didn't we? Yeah, we did this That's why we refer to a standardization. We're making everything the same. <coughs> so I'll write that down like we need mean it. The probability between 80 
and 95. Hey, guys. Is equal to the probability between negative 2 and 1. Negative 1. Probability between negative 2 and negative 1 is 0 0.16 minus 0 0.025, which is 0.135. The reason why standardization is so important is we, if we can standardize things, we know to a really good extent what the probabilities are. Questions four through six. <clears throat> okay, we have a table here, and we're supposed to find the first quartile of 20 salaries. You will have your calculator with you. So I recommend you put these in your calculator. Let's see. I'm going to clear all lists. And I'll go to the first one. And I'll put these numbers in, 28, 31, 35, sorry, 34, 35, 7, 1, 2, 2, 7, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2. Oh, I'm sorry, these are 41. Forty-seven, forty-nine, fifty-one, two, two, sixty-one, seven, seventy-two, five, seven. <clears throat> okay, so those are my twenty observations. I absolutely. Yep. Next, we're going to compute the one variable statistics. This should tell me everything. So stat, edit, no, home screen, stat, calculate one variable statistics for L1. <clears throat> that tells me everything I will need to know. The first thing is the first quartile. The first quartile is 39. So for Q1 equals, do we say 39? Wait, is it Q139? Yeah, 39. Number five, IQR. IQR equals Q3 interquartile range equals Q3 minus Q1, which is 60.5 minus 39. <clears throat> that should be 21. 21.5. 21.5. <clears throat> So for question six, since we're not changing this variability, right? We are just sliding all the numbers over, right? We're just sliding all the measurements over 3,000. <clears throat> uh, the IQR will not change. So C, unchanged, yeah.
Yeah, basically. So Q3 minus Q1 is still going to be the same number. Yeah. Exactly. Seven. Rental values are 470, 600. What is the standard deviation of that sample? Okay, we can just do that with a calculator again. So again, take your memory, clear your lists. Go back into the stat edit menu. Let's put those in. <clears throat> 470, 600, 580, 550. And then we're going to compute one variable statistics. So that, so that's good. Uh, notice that it said sample, right? It says the standard deviation of the sample. So because it's a sample, you know you're going to use S and not sigma. S is 57.15. So 7. We are told this is a sample. So use S Yeah. <clears throat> if it's a population. Yes. Hmm? That's the standard deviation of a population. I don't remember what that number that was. That was 5715. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I would use three. You're right. 155. Yeah, you know, the thing is with this one, it's... um. This, because we're talking about, because we are talking about dollar value, we want to be accurate to at least the cent place. So we actually have to carry our standard deviation more than the cent place. Q3 minus Q1, but yes, every time. Every time. Quartile 1. It's a, it's kind of the, if you put the numbers in order, okay. the list in order, it'd be 25% from the bottom. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay. Right. What's, okay, so if it says sample, then you use SX, when do you use the other one? When you have a population. Uh, it's sample, sample from the population? Uh, just be warned, you're almost never going to use sigma X. It's almost always going to be SX. Eight. You're asked to find the median age. So this is interesting. We don't know actually how many people are in our survey. So we got to ask this question. How many people are in the survey? How? Okay, uh, what did we say? What was the, uh, how many people were in our survey? Yep. Six hundred sixty-seven. 
667, good. Uh, you want to find the median? Which, which observation is that going to be from the bottom? Yeah, it's going to be the we are looking for for the median or the 333.5th observation. Okay, so where would that 333rd observation be? Well, it's not in 18, right? That's only 14. Cumulatively speaking, it's not in 19 because that's only 134. Would it be in 20, 134 plus 200? That's 334, right? So it should be 20. Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't know how you put it in your calculator. You don't know all of the numbers. Okay, but listen, there are eight, 14 people aged 18. Did you put 14 18s in your calculator? Oh, right? Thank God I didn't have to get to 220. Did you put 220s in your calculator? No? Okay. I highly doubt you did. <laughs> All right. Number nine. is 30. 30. The mean age of five people is 30. When one of those people who is 50 years old leaves the room, the remaining, the mean age of the remaining four people will be. Okay, so here's how I like to do this one. I like to think about, hello. I like to think about how would I actually find the mean? Well, if I was still in middle school, I would probably add the, all of them together and divide by five, right? Okay, so let's do that. Uh, do we know what the first person's age is? Good. Do we know what the second person's age is? Do we know what the third person's age is? We don't. Do we know the fourth person's age? Do we know the fifth person's age? Yeah, actually, we know it's 50. It tells us, right? Yeah. All right. And then we're going to divide by 5. And how much are we going to get? 30. We're going to get 30 because that's the average. Okay. <clears throat> okay. We're going to move on again. Let's multiply that 5 over. Okay. Just very basic algebra. x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus 50, that's going to be equal to 150. Nothing magical, right? Good. More algebra, subtract 50 from both sides of the equal sign. x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 is now going to be equal to 100. If we divide both sides by 4, everything divided by 4 is going to be equal to 25, which should look familiar because this is the average formula. So the average, yeah, the average is now 25. Yeah, this is a trick I used to teach in my SAT class. Yeah. What well, question number eight? When you said we're looking for the three hundred thirty-third and a half uh -huh. person, do we just go to three, three, three? Well, no. You have to go cumulatively from the least. Yeah. So you have to start from the left. You have fourteen people are eighteen. The next twenty, one hundred twenty are nineteen. So that's now one hundred and thirty-four people. Yeah. And then the two hundred. 
Yeah, and so you're going to stop when you go over 335. 333. Uh, okay. What's the first number of people in 820 was 199, it would be 21. Yeah. Okay, that's good for number 9. Let's look at number 10. Number 10, we have the following question. The average salary of female workers is 3,500. The average salary of male workers is 41,000. I'm sorry, 35,000 and 41,000. What would be the average salary of everybody? And the answer to that is we don't know. Okay. Since the idea here is that you have to know what everybody's salary is. Okay. And um, since we don't know how many male and female employees there are, we don't know. We can illustrate that really easily if you just think about the following. Let's think about a company where that has 50 females and 50 males, and you took their average. Okay, the average of those 50 females, those average of those 50 males, if you average them both together, you will get the actual average. However, what if your company only has one female and 50 males? Okay, the av that woman, we know her salary is gonna be 35,000, we know the average of the 50 males is going to be 41,000. Would you really just average those two together then? I don't know about an outlier, but those 41,000, the, the weight of that 41,000 would be much greater than the weight of that 35,000. So what you would want to do is take a weighted average, something to which I'm not sure we're going to discuss but it's easy to figure out. Okay, so the answer here should be, um, we don't know anything. But so why could you see because it could? So, yeah. yeah, well, yeah, it could be any number between 3,500 and 4,100, right? Could it anything that says it could be, like, it could be? Don't make, it, don't, make, don't make any rules like that, okay? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, it has to be somewhere between those two. We just don't know if it's closer to 4,100 or closer to 3,500. It's going to depend on if there are more men, men or more women. Oh my god, the Cardinals are up 3 2. Bottom of the seventh. Wait, that was 40 minutes ago. It could be over. Eleven. All right, so let's take a look at this bar graph. I'm sorry. Let's take a look at this uh, box plot. Bye-bye. Uh, okay, so you can estimate for me. Um, now, these are in thousands, right? So you can actually kind of estimate what would the minimum salary be. And based on my piece of paper that I folded in half, it looks like the minimum salary is about 20, let's call it 27,000. Okay. So estimated from the box plot. Min. Min is about twenty seven thousand. Q one is about I don't know thirty eight thousand. 
And again, I'm just estimating from the box plot. The median, I estimate that to be uh, probably 50, no, 48,000 again. Q3, we can estimate that. Let me finish this. Q3, you can estimate that at 60,000. And then the maximum, we can estimate that to be uh, maybe 76,000. Yeah, usually, I mean, the idea is to pick the best answer, whatever's closest to your answer. All right, so that's not actually the question. The question is, uh, which one of these following is true? Is the maximum salary somewhere between $6,000 and $7,000? No, that's not true. The maximum looks like it's about $76,000. Is the minimum salary about $20,000? No, it's a bit higher than that. That's $27,000. Is the interquartile range about 20,000? Yes. Let's see. We have 60,000 minus 38,000. That's 22,000. That's pretty close. 22,000. And lastly, the median, sa the median salary is 40,000. No, that median salary I estimated at 48,000. So the only one which seems to be close would be the interquartile range. IQR, or the only response that is close, is IQR is about equal to, we said 20,000. And remember, we estimated 22,000. OK? 12. Based on the box plot, what's true? Is the salary distribution approximately symmetric? It's pretty close. It looks like the right, the high side, the positives are a little bit bigger, but that's pretty close. Okay. Ten employees make more than fifty thousand. Um. Yeah. Let's see. Um, there are 20 employees. 10 of them make more than the median. Okay. So 10 of them make more than 48,000. About 10 about 10 employees make more than 48,000. Wait, I have a question. So 20 make 48,000? No. There are 20 employees in the company. Right. Okay. So the, those 20 people make somewhere between 27,000 and 76,000. Okay. Now it says the median, or we estimated the median to be about 48,000, right? That means about 50 of those, no, not 50, 50% 50 of those 20 employees, or 10 employees make less than 48,000, 10 employees make greater than 48,000, okay? So B looks approximately, looks pretty good, right? About 10 employees make more than 50,000. It's pretty close. C, nobody makes more than 80,000. Yeah, that's true. that's true. The maximum salary here, we estimate to be 76000 So it really looks like all of those were true. So D, based on the estimates. Yes. All of the responses are true. OK? And that was 12. Based on this box plot, the five number summary. Now, I don't know how close I'm going to get. But this is what we did here. Based on that five number summary, we got those five numbers. OK? And again, I'm not sure how close I am, but that should be close enough for a free response for a multiple choice question. 
14. A sample of five birth weights are these. So again, you're just going to use your calculator. Might help if you um, wrote a formula here. X bar is equal to one fifth, eighty nine, one twenty two, one thirty seven, one forty four, and ninety eight. And I don't know what that adds up to. But I'm, I am going to cheat and take a look at the answer. 590? 518. Okay. Again, just in the interest of time, it's not really important to, um, you should be able to do that on your calculator. Last one, 15. Can you believe we're at 15? Which is not correct. A, 50% of the male students have a birth weight, I'm sorry, a weight between 150 and 85. To me, that sounds like you need to find two segments of the box plot between 150 and 185. Do we have two segments of the box plot between 150 and 185? Yeah. Yeah, that's about true, right? about true, right? 25%. So that's one part, either one box or one stem. Not stem, one whisker. Uh, is greater than 130. So it looks like the female upper whisker is about at about 130, right? So that's pretty much true. The median weight of male students is about 162. So take the middle of the box where the line is and bring it down. That looks like right around 162. That looks to be about true also. Lastly, the mean weight of female, not lastly, the mean weight of female students is about 120 because of symmetry. Hmm. The median is about 120, right? Yeah. Is the female about symmetric? Yes. Yeah, it's pretty close to symmetric. So the female mean weight should also be right around 120. Let me finish up and then we'll go. Lastly, male students have less variability than female students. How do we measure variability? IQR. Does the male have a bigger box than the females? Yes. So the male IQR boxes um, is larger than the female IQR. Therefore, E is false. Okay. Notice that they also carefully constructed this because the male range is also greater than the female range. So by ev any standard of variability that's appropriate here, the um, Male has more variability. Yeah. So I wanted to judge about symmetry. They just check the value of the mean and the whiskers on both sides. Yes. If both boxes are about the same, both whiskers are about the same. And there's no outliers. No outliers, yeah. But even if it has outliers, if there's like two whiskers, we have a symmetry. Yeah. If the outliers are approximately in the same position relative. I'm sorry? The outliers are always detached from the whiskers. The lines at the end. So those would be like just like in that that is parallel to the outliers, like to the whiskers, or would it just be all the way It would be parallel to the whisker. Okay, uh, I'm gonna stop it here. Yeah. For 15A, 50%, right? Yes. Okay, so 
50% refers to two parts of the box and whisker plot, either one whisker and one box, or two boxes or two whiskers. So that's what we're looking for here, two parts of the box plot. Are two bo parts of the box plot for males between 150 and 185? Yeah, well, it looks like the left box is just a, right around 155. The right box, yeah, that's right around 185. Okay? Yeah. So by that, does that mean like a whisker and a box are each worth like 25% of the whole Exactly. 